In this video, we're looking at theoretical probability. So theoretical probability gives the outcome of the occurrence of an event based on mathematics and reasoning. Ideally, it tells us what should happen in a perfect situation without actually going and doing a bunch of experiments. Now, it is important to note that experimental probability, the more trials or tests you do, the closer that probability will always get to the theoretical probability. So if you flip a coin 10,000 times, it's very likely that you're going to get a 50% chance of getting heads and a 50% chance of getting tails. The more often you do the test, the closer and closer the probabilities will get to be in that theoretical one. So another thing I just want to introduce is mutually exclusive events. Now these are events that cannot occur at the same time. So if I'm using my coin talk here, for example, if you flip that coin and getting heads and tails, you can't do it. So flipping a coin is a mutually exclusive event. You cannot get both heads and tails at the same time. Um, another thing we want to introduce is your addition rule for mutually exclusive events. Essentially all it's saying is that your total probability over here should be the probability of probability A and probability B being added together. So we're going to look at an example here. A container holds five blue, three white, seven yellow marbles. And if one marble is selected at random, find the probability of selecting a white marble. So this is pretty straightforward. So for A, the probability of getting the white marble will be three over three over uh, 15, so one over five. Now, B is a little bit different. Find the probability of a white or blue marble. So this is where your mutually adding the probabilities up kind of comes in. So essentially what we're gonna do is probability of white or blue is the same as having the probability of white plus the probability of blue. So in this case, that's uh, 3 over 15 plus 5 over 15. The reason I didn't use the simplified version here is because they, these both have the same denominator and I can just quickly add them together. So 8 over 15. Now, another thing to remember with probabilities is your range of probabilities. Essentially, if you have some sort of probability that equals 0, that event's impossible. It can't happen if it's zero. Whereas if the probability is one, it's going to happen every time. It's guaranteed. So all probabilities of events need to lie between zero and one. They can't be any bigger or any smaller than that. They need to be between zero and one. All right. So that means for these mutually exclusive events, um, the probabilities always add up to one. So think about a coin, for example. You have a 50% chance or a half one over five, two chance of getting heads you have a one over two chance of getting tails if you add those together you get one think about when you're rolling a die each probability is one over six and there's six numbers so one over six plus one over six plus one over six plus one over six plus one over so forth that all adds up to one another thing we need to remember about is complementary events so a complement of set e is just the set of all elements that are not in e so the opposite we do we can find this by just going one minus some sort of probability of an event. So an example of this would be that the probability of it raining is 72% and we want to find the probability of it not raining. So the probability of it not R uh, for raining should be one minus the probability of it raining because you can only have raining or not raining. So over here we get one minus 0.72. So we end up with 0.2. 2.8 chance of it not raining. So that's the comp an example of a complementary event. Another thing we should cover is your expected value. So expected values of events can be found by timesing the probability of that event occurring by how many times you're doing it. So in our example here, we have the probability of a traffic light will turn green is 5 over 12. A taxi goes through the traffic light 192 times. How many times would the taxi expect the light to be green as it approaches. So this is where we come into the expected value. So expected 
equals the probability of uh, green times the number of trials in this case. So our probability of green was 5 over 12 and we're going to times it by 192 and that equals 80. So you would expect 80 times that the light will be green as a taxi goes through. Other than that, every other time you would expect to be a different color. So we covered a lot in that video. Feel free to pause it, go back, re-watch each example or my explanations of each part. But we did cover a lot in this video.